hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and I, today we're going to learn some more about particles. We're going to be making this little particle effect that I quickly made in Houdini. It's relatively simple but we'll get right into it. Um, update out for the channel. It's been a very busy year. I haven't been posting a lot recently on the channel because there's some interesting things happening in the background. I can't wait to share them with you but you'll find out very shortly what they are. So. Now let's get into the tutorial. Over here there are three different nodes. Two of them are just importing particles from a different layer of the simulation. But we'll more on that later. The one we want to focus on right now is particles main. We're going to start with a line. The line is on the z-axis and it's on one. It only has two points. Then you will add a copy. The copy could, should create this shape if done correctly. The number of copies is 13, but based on how many you want to add is how the shape will change. You're then going to ro rotate it around 30 degrees, or, or close to 30 degrees, and then you're going to add a transform. This transform is going to rotate this circle spiral shape onto the the ground of zero, 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 and you're going to need a negative 90 in the Z column to do so. The next thing we're going to do is add animation. The one way to do this to get this little pinwheel to spin is by doing a dollar T times 180 in the Y axis. The only one problem with this is that you don't really have um, any velocity once you've added the animation, and that's where the point velocity stop comes in. The point velocity stop will add velocity trails onto your animation. It is going to take um, the speed and calculate the speed of these points by leaving when you installize compute from deformation on your objects. Other than that, you don't really need to change any of the other parameters. The next thing you are going to add is a null. And the null is just going to tell you that this is the end of the emitter. The next thing you're going to do is go over here to a resample. You can see that the resample is resampling the spiral, but the other thing about it is that it is emitting a tangent and curve view attribute, which you're going to need in a second. It's also using maximum segments for the segment. We're then going to go down to color and we're going to turn this off. And you can see I'm basing the color off the curve view attributes. And you can see based on how the ramp is, that's how much color you get. The next thing you're going to do is add down a pop net and give it some pre-roll so it starts before frame one. I have this starting at negative 15, but you can do as, as you please. Diving inside, we have some interesting things starting to occur. We have this section of the little pinwheel happening. Going to the source first input, you can see that it is a scattering onto surfaces using the first context geometry and the emission attribute is color. Going to birth, you can see the impulse activation is set to one. The constant birth rate is 78,000 and we've varied the life expectancy. The next thing we've done is we've added a pop wind and you can see up here we are using this little equation to control the pop wind. What this equation is doing is it's relying on this little section right here. What this is doing is emitting this force every three frames. We've then added an amplitude and some swirl size to it to give it some variation. We've then added a pop color, which you can choose any color that you like, and then we've ramped it. Going to alpha, you can control the alpha like this. Now, I've added the alpha because I want to see some general fall off and transparency when I go to render. Um, and you might want to consider that as well. Down here on the pop solver, I haven't played with much. The time scale is basically the same, and so is every other parameter. Jumping up, we have our attribute delete, which is deleting everything but these attributes. The attribute randomize is adding a p scale value of these down here with a min and max value. We've then added an out particle center null down at the bottom here. Jumping over back up to our emitter, the spiral. We can go to the add over here, which is stripping it of all the geometry, but keeping the points. 
We've then added a blast, which is blasting away the center point as we don't really need it. We've then trailed it so we can have some gaps filled in between these little trails. And then we've added another pop net. The pop net has a uh, pre-roll of 34 frames and diving inside, we can see something else interesting happening. So we go here, we can have these little things going. Going to the source first input, you can see that it is emitting from points and the geometry source is using the first context input. The impulse activation here you can see is linked to the constant activation and you can do that by going to copy parameter and then going to pasting relative references into this parameter. The birth constant birth rate is 45,000 and we vary the life expectancy down here. The next thing down here is a pop wind, and as you can see, we've cranked up the amplitude, everything else is the same, and but we've used our little handy dandy equation that we've used in the other particle system, but this time we're emitting this force every 20 frames. Down here we have a pop wind, we vary the amplitude and the swirl size, and we're using this activation little equation again. This one's going for every two frames. This one down here, Pretty much the same concept, varying the amplitude and swirl size, and emitting this every 12 frames. This is all custom up and up to you, you can decide what you like. Pop color. We've done the same thing here where we've added a ramp for our alpha, and this time we've based it off age. Going to our color, we've got color of blue to a dark blue. You can choose any color you like. Over here, we haven't changed anything on the pop solver. Going down here, we're deleting every attribute except for these ones. And down here, we're adding the P scale and varying the P scale as well, as well as adding a null. And this is our main output of which will usually be seen in the simulation. Over here, you can see that there's another node connecting to our attribute delete. And that is a delete node. And the delete node is deleting non-selected, all points, and age under 0.4. Attribute delete is deleting all attributes, but the velocity. And over here we are varying what we're, our, we are sampling which points we'd like to use. Um, we're using points and we're deleting by range. So we're choosing a random range of points that we want to sample from. Over here we have a pop net. We have a start frame of negative 23. And down here in the source for the first input, you can see something else is happening. If we play this back, you can see that it's emitting every other couple frames or so. It's a little bit different from our previous particles. So it's using part points again and the first context geometry. This, however, this time, our impulse activation is using our equation, which is emitting this every 12 frames. Again, this is copied and pasted into the constant activation. 45,000 particles are being emitted from this, and we vary the life expectancy as well. The pop wind over here is on constant all the time, and we've amplituded it up, as well as the swirl size. We've added some pop color here, and we've based this on age. Then over here, we've added some updated alpha. And on the pop solver, we've turned this down to 0 0.5. So it emits a little bit slower. Jumping up, we have our attribute randomized, which is adding our P scale value again. And we have a out secondary particle. So jumping back over here, you can see that our main setup is all good to go. And if we turn these on, we can see the other two particle systems. All these are doing is bringing them in so they have an object merge, they're transforming into this object, and they're grabbing our outputs. You'll notice that all of these have a glow material on them. On the glow material, all I've done is choose a color that I like, glow ramp rate, and enable the mission. And that's pretty much it. And that's how you create this little spirally pinwheel effect and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.